Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. What was the last magazine you read? You got better things to do? What, than read magazines? Oh, come on. Come on. You guys don't... I'm kind of forced to. Well, not really. It's just that Ponzi has just about every magazine subscription known to the planet. Uh, I only subscribe to a few magazines, including Mad Magazine, which is up for renewal. A CPU Magazine, which of course I write a monthly column for and have been doing that since its inaugural issue a few years ago. Um, but, you know, every once in a while, a, a magazine does float through our house uh, it, with a headline that catches my attention. And the May 2008 issue of Scientific American had on the front cover, Science 2.0, The Risks and Rewards of Web-Based Research by M. Mitchell Waldrop. And I thought this was going to be uh, somewhat of an interesting article, but I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. I didn't know whether scientists were embracing the new web, uh, the collaborative web, uh, or if they were kind of refusing it steadfastly. And I think uh, the, uh, the jury's still out on that. Um, and there's a one note on page 72 that says, although wikis are gaining, scientists have been strikingly slow to embrace one of the most popular web, quote-unquote, 2.0 applications, weblogging or blogging. And uh, I know one scientist in particular who hasn't uh, shunned the, the whole blogosphere and blogging phenomenon, that would be Dr. Phil Plate uh, from badastronomy.com. Uh, it's not just a blatant plug. He's a good guy, good friend, and he's currently working on a book, which I will also be blatantly plugging at some point in the future when it's published. The key concepts of this article, as written by the editors, are as follows. Science 2.0 generally refers to new practices of scientists who post raw experimental results, nascent theories, claims of discovery, and draft papers on the web for others to see and comment on. Proponents say these open access practices make scientific progress more collaborative and therefore more productive. Critics say scientists who put preliminary findings online risk having others copy or exploit the work to gain credit or even patents. And even though I'm certainly not a scientist, uh, I've faced you know, similar issues on being open or remaining closed about ideas. And I guess in the recent months, I've become more and more open about development of ideas, uh, sharing ideas, sharing thoughts, in the hopes that in many ways they'll just be created, whether they're created by me or by somebody else. And in many cases, they're created by somebody else because I do not have the skill to be able to pull it off. And I think there's a certain amount of ego gratification that goes along with it uh, in terms of creating something new or discovering something new. Um, but I also know that my life professionally would be extremely stunted if I did not take an open approach to the ideas that I had in my head. And by open approach, I mean just kind of letting them go out there to see if, you know, if they resonated. You know, it's kind of like throwing pasta up against the wall to see if it sticks. I mean, the last thing you want to do is spend all this time to realize that either someone else is going to beat you to the punch or, uh, you know, you're just kind of doing it for no reason whatsoever. I mean, not to say that any experiment that would happen or any idea that would happen wouldn't happen for a reason, but not having that kind of immediate feedback, I think, is potentially more detrimental than having that feedback and, and having that feedback be largely negative or non-constructive. Um, they're beginning, I guess, to uh, start understanding how the web is evolving. And it's really shaping the way every facet of our lives is being conducted. Science, health, um, you know, research, information, study. I mean, it's just, you can't think of, of, of a single part of your day that is not likely touched by the internet in some fashion. I've noticed that increasingly, uh, you know, we rely on the internet insofar as if it didn't exist, would you be able to function? I mean, think about it. 
When was the last time you sat in front of a computer that wasn't connected to the internet? Did it feel like a real computer? Did you feel like you were only getting, you know, so much out of it? I mean, it depends, of course, on the function of that computer, but let's assume that it's a PC, a home PC for general use. And I think as someone who certainly benefits from science and technology directly and indirectly, I'd like to see a lot more collaboration happen. And I, I don't know if I'd necessarily be able to give as much feedback as someone who was steeped in the practice, uh, who was, uh, you know, obviously far more educated in one particular science or another than I, um, or I should say, than me. I, yeah, I, uh, I apologize for that. There's some live editing going on here, some open dialogue. You'll forgive me for using the wrong pronoun there, hopefully. But I guess that's just a part of being open and being honest and being direct. Uh, certainly, I'd like to know a lot more about how science experiments are being conducted, and most importantly, who's funding those experiments and those studies. That, to me, is much more interesting in many ways than the results because you can't take the results of an experiment and you can't really take the hypothesis, hypothesis of the experiment out of context of the institution or institutions or companies that funded that particular uh, project, at, at least in my opinion. Um, you know, I always you know, want to find out as, as much as I can about any particular effort that's going on. But I don't think science could be hurt by more collaboration. I, I think more than anything, and Ponzi has even brought this up, um, mixing more macro with micro may produce more interesting conversations in scientific communities. So uh, the idea of macro, uh, bigger, larger, astronomy, uh, are they talking to the micro, those who you know view things through electron microscopes? Are there similarities uh, between these two types of sciences? Um, and you know, where could collaboration potentially exist? I mean, infinity in both directions. Um, it's certainly something I'd be interested in hearing more about as you know, the years progress, especially if you are in a science, if you're a scientist, uh, if you uh, study and uh, some particular topic related to, well, let's see here, life sciences, um, I guess there's, uh, well, I guess, I don't know all the sciences. <laughs> I know life. I know there's like, like you know, space, bio, um, what was the other one? Is gaming, video games, is that a science? I don't know. I'm, I, I think I'm reaching there. Regardless, uh, if, if you are or you do consider yourself a scientist, uh, then I'd be interested in hearing from you, especially if you've had any experiences uh, with collaboration or not collaborating uh, with peers. Um, I don't know. I think the world could benefit if the world dropped its ego. Oh, thank you. Physics. Yeah, I hated that class. I, could, I would make a horrible scientist. I would. So... Anyway, uh, I'd be interested in hearing from you. My email address is chris at perillo.com. And uh, you, of course, are welcome to give your feedback on this particular topic. Leave a comment in the corresponding blog post. You're also welcome to stop by uh, the website where I'm streaming my life pretty much online 24 hours a day. That's, that's not really a science. It's more of a, I don't know what it is, really. But... The, the website where you can find us typically talking tech, sometimes about science, is at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.